What is up guys? Welcome to Lunkin Tutors Biology 2.10. Now, if you don't remember last time we were talking about plant tissues or specifically simple plant tissues. We discussed that the plant tissues get divided into two categories, simple plant tissues and complex plant tissues. The simple ones were divided into parenchyma, sclerenchyma and cholenchyma. And now today we're going to be talking about the complex plant tissues, the tissues which have more than one type of cell in them. So these ones are a bit more complicated and you need to learn just a bit more than you did with the simple plant tissues. However, it will be a barrage of drawings. So try your best to draw these structures whenever you can. Because drawing it again and again is probably the best way to remember it. So we discussed that there are two types of complex tissues, namely the phloem tissues and the xylem tissues. We're going to start off with the phloem tissues. Now don't mind me, I'm going to start drawing and I'm going to be explaining everything you need to know. There are four types of cells inside the phloem tissue. Remember that it has more than one type of cells. So you need to remember all four of these types and you need to be able to draw them as well as explain their functions. The four types are the sieve tube elements, the companion cells, the phloem parenchyma and the phloem fibers. Those four types of cells are what makes a quote unquote phloem. The phloem is developed from the procambial strands of the outer side of the stem. The main function of the phloem is basically to transport soluble products of photosynthesis, mainly in the form of uh, aqueous sucrose, which means sucrose which is dissolved in water. That's basically it. If you had to define the function of the phloem, it would be a tissue which helps the translocation of sucrose. But that won't cut it. We're going to have to learn each and every one of the cells inside the phloem tissue. The first one is the sieve tube elements. The one that I'm going to label right now is going to be called the sieve tube elements. See, these are extremely long cells, but in the transverse section, you can only see it as a polygon. It's only found in flowering plants because they have to have an advanced phloem. If they don't have a vascular bundle, which includes the phloem and the xylem, you won't be able to see sieve tube elements. The sieve tubes have layers and these are called the sieve plates. There are little holes in them which lets aqueous solutions go through them. Now this presence of holes is called a perforated plate. So this is known as a perforated sieve plate. Because of all these perforations in the sieve tubes, it makes a pathway so that it can translocate sucrose throughout the entire plant. You need to remember that the sieve plates are not lignified structures, so they do not contain lignin. It's made up of cellulose and it is a living cell. Just make sure that you remember that the sieve tube is a living cell. But just like the red blood cell, when it matures, the nucleus is removed. It has a cytoplasm, small mitochondria, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, but it does not have any ribosomes or rough ER. The sieve tubes are capable of sending material to the adjacent companion cells because of the fact that they have plasma desmatas. And that is really all you need to know about the sieve tubes. So we said that there were four parts of the phloem tissue and we're going to move on to the second one, which is known as companion cells. Now, before I go on, I need to tell you guys that there is an entire part, an entire complete unit, which the whole point of that unit is to explain how materials are transported through the plants, the transportation, the translocation of materials inside the plant. So, the terminology would be confusing now because you're not supposed to really get this complete grip on things because we'll be visiting this entire part later again in the sixth unit. So I'll be giving you guys the brief description, the things that you need to know about for now. Unless you want to really know only about transportation, you guys should check the relevant videos up of the sixth unit. So we're going on to companion cells. The companion cells are right next to the sieve tubes. It's, ex it's extremely close 
and it contains a cellulose cell wall, it has a nucleus, it has a dense cytoplasm, unlike the sieve tube elements which have a cytoplasm, well, it has cytoplasmic filaments, so it's not as complex as the companion cells. And inside the companion cells, you can see that it has rough endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes. I'm not really going to draw the organelles in the structure because you really need to understand what the whole unit looks like. So I'm not going to draw each and every organelle. You guys should be able to understand what the organelles look like and can imagine that they are in the cytoplasm. The reason that I'm not drawing the organelles is because it would get too complicated and the drawing would look extremely messed up and not simple to understand. If you don't understand how organelles work, there is a video which is about an hour long where we covered organelles of every type of cell. So just like we said before, the plasma desmata connects the sieve tube elements to the companion cells. And finally, the main function of the companion cells is for and finally, the main function of companion cells is a process called phloem loading and phloem unloading. And now you'd be like, what does phloem unloading and loading mean? And again, don't worry, we will get to that later. Just remember what, just remember that such a thing exists and you, we will cover it in complete detail during the sixth unit. So the process of phloem loading and phloem unloading happen through a specialized type of companion cell called transfer cells. The only difference is that these cells have invaginations into the cell body. There's nothing really you need to know about that. Just remember that if they want you to write something about transfer cells, you basically have to say everything about companion cells and say that it's a specialized form of it. And then we go on to phloem parenchyma. We already know what parenchyma is, but let's just give a little description, the stuff that they expect you to remember. It's found both in primary and secondary phloem. In the secondary phloem, they are radially arranged to form medullary rays, and the function is really the same thing as the parenchyma tissues we talked about before. The function is storage. Again, don't worry about the terminology that you won't understand. And finally, phloem fibers, we know what a fiber is. We were talking before about the sclerenchyma in the previous episode, and we discussed that they are lignified dead cells, which they use for supportive functions. And it's the same thing here. They have the cell lumen. It's generally the same parenchyma and sclerenchyma. The fact that they haven't called it phloem sclerenchyma is because that there are two types of sclerenchyma, namely the stone cells and the well fibers so keep that in mind and we will be going on to the next complex plant tissue again don't worry if you don't understand what a medullary ray is or what the primary and secondary phloem are the thing is there are actually two parts to discuss about this there are two full lessons and they don't expect you to understand everything here the only reason that they expect you to understand it in the second unit well, not really understand it, but they want you to know that such a thing exists so that when they're teaching or when we're teaching the 6th and 11th unit, actually the 6th and 10th unit, after you explain it there and then we tell you guys to track back to this unit and see what it means, you would have a general idea of what they meant here extremely clearly and that would be so much better than just going ahead and trying to explain everything at once. So what you need to know now is how to draw the phloem and how to differentiate these cells and to know the types of the cells in the phloem and to know what they do. That's basically it. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the xylem. Just like the phloem, the xylem also consists of four types of tissues. And again, they're in the vascular bundle, so these are also found in flowering plants. The four cells in the tissue are the vessel elements, the tracheids, the xylem parenchyma, and the xylem fibers. Now, you already should know what xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers are, so we won't go into much detail about that, but what are the xylem vessel elements? So, as we said, the vessel elements, or, well, anything in the xylem, are found in flowering plants. The scientific term for flowering plants is called anthophyta. 
here's the thing. They're also absent in groups of vascular plants, which means plants that have vascular bundles other than anthophytes. So remember, they're only found in flowering plants. The xylem is differentiated into two parts, the protoxylem and the metasylem. In plants that undergo secondary thickening, which we talked about before, the xylem is cut off by the cambium and it's called the secondary xylem. Again, you don't need to know that much yet, it's just so that you understand there are two types of phloems and two types of xylems and you don't get confused later on. So each vessel element is a tubular long cell. It's just like the phloem sieve tubes except that it's well, circular instead of being polygonal. And instead of having a perforated sieve plate on top of the element, it has one giant pore or one giant hole. The vessel elements are arranged one behind the other to form an extremely long tibule termed a vessel. Well, basically, the front and back of a lot of vessel elements join together in a long row. Now, the vessels are non-living. We talked about that before because unlike the sieve tubes, the vessels are actually lignified. That means that, well, you guessed it, the cell is a dead cell. And because of that, there is no cytoplasm, there is no nucleus, and it just has a large cell cavity. There are actually a bunch of variations of the lignification in the vessel elements and they are termed differently depending on the pattern. You don't really need to know much about that. I'll just I'll just give a little scribble over here so that you may want to use it in the future. I mean, it's just interesting. In the protoxylum, they have patterns called annular and spiral. The colored areas, the shaded areas are the parts where it's lignified. And in the metasylum, they have things like the reticulate form, which is all weirdy, and the bordered pits form. You don't really need to know much about these formations, just know that such formations exist. So the main function of the xylem is the conduction of water and minerals. So you have a diagram of the xylem vessel. Remember that you have to memorize all of it because that's how biology works. Well, it's basically how well you can memorize it. And on top of that, the Sri Lankan syllabus is designed in a special way to screw you over by only being able to memorize stuff. I mean, the only thing they want you to do is being able to memorize stuff. If you understand it, good for you, but that's not gonna get you any marks. Just put some effort into it and study. I should be taking my own advice, actually. Then we're going to move on to tracheids. Now, unlike the other parts of the xylem, tracheids are found in all vascular plants. They are elongated cells with lateral tapering ends. We talked about tapering ends before, even in sclerenchyma, they're like wedges which become thinner and thinner at the top and the bottom. The cross walls or the barriers of the tracheids are extremely perforated, which means they have holes all over the place. The cell walls are lignified and therefore that means they are dead cells with empty lumens and when these cells become mature you can see pits in these walls. In a cross section it is a polygonal structure, it looks just like the sieve tubes and the main function of tracheids is to transport water. And the water and minerals move from one tracheid to another through the large number of pores. And then we have xylem fibers. Now the fibers present in the xylem, they are found in the xylem vessels and tracheids. The main function is mechanical support, just like sclerenchyma, so don't worry about that. It's the xylem fibers and the phloem fibers do the same thing. And then we have the xylem parenchyma, the only living cell found in the xylem. Just remember that, guys. It is the only living cell found in the xylem. Because in the phloem, we started with living cells, but the in the xylem, everything was dead except the parenchyma. If you remember back in simple tissues, we talked that parenchyma and cholenchyma are living and sclerenchyma are dead cells. So in the xylem vessels, in the xylem tissue, the only non-lignified 
cell is the xylem parenchyma which is living. It can be found in both primary and secondary xylem. It has a cellulose cell wall and sometimes lignified, but the lignification doesn't cover the entire thing and it doesn't kill it off. The second xylem forms medullary rings which form radial sheets of tissues. The main function is the storage of food and the transport of food materials. Remember parenchyma, storage, clarenchyma, mechanical support. So if you don't understand what the medullary rays are, again, as I said before, don't worry, we will get to those. It's basically the arrangement of the vascular bundle and we'll talk about everything later, don't worry about that. So that is it for the xylem and the phloem. Let's just see if you remember all the cells. Now there are four types of cells present in the phloem, which happen to be sieve tube elements, which transport sucrose to other parts of the plant. The companion cells, which help in phloem loading and phloem unloading. The phloem parenchyma, which are storage cells, and the phloem fibers, which are there for mechanical support. And in the xylem, the xylem vessel elements conduct water and minerals. The tracheids conduct water and minerals, mainly in non-flowering plants. The xylem parenchyma functions as the food storage unit and sometimes as transport, and xylem fibers give mechanical support. So with that guys, we have completed plant tissues. Congratulations, that is it for 2.10. For those of you guys who are going to wonder and ask why I was going, to, why I have it as 2.10 and 2.11, if I started with 2.1, isn't 2.2 bigger than 2.11 because it's 2.11? Well, sorry about that. I didn't really think that I would make so many parts of the second unit. I underestimated the size of it, and we have been continuing like that. So let's just deal with it for now. It's not going to be such a problem. Until next time guys, we'll see you guys later and don't forget there will be a written note on lungcontutor.com If you're not watching it from the website, please do it will help you more and if this video does help you at all Don't forget to like and share it with some of your friends as always. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you again next time. Have a great day